If you go on some of the forums, for example, they can be quite negative, actually quite depressing to, to read. So Vicky, when you were first diagnosed, where did you go for information about Parkinson's? First of all, I was gobsmacked that when the letter came through, there wasn't any information. So it was just a letter saying you're diagnosed. And I sort of got the piece of paper, turned it over and I was like, where, where are all the numbers? And, you know, what? So, yeah, I did take it into my own hands and... Um, I found that there are lots of Parkinson's events out there and webinars on Parkinson's on something called Eventbrite. I first of all went onto Facebook and found lots of different support groups. So these were um, specifically for those with young onset. And I was able to talk to a wide range of people who had a huge amount of information, but some of it wasn't necessarily... Um, you know it worked for them it didn't mean it would work for everyone and then I looked at some charities particularly you know Parkinson's UK but also Parkinson's Care and Support UK and they had a host of um, events and had speakers on board so I found that really useful. Yeah I think I think there's like you say many channels so there's social media there's websites there's charities there's a medical profession of course and there's books you can read but I think you have to sort of use all of them but, but yeah. at the same time take them with a bit of a pinch of salt as well yeah. because um, if you go on some of the forums, for example, they can be quite negative and quite de- actually quite depressing to, to read. I think if you go on the US sites, they're, they're a bit more rural than in the UK. So you have to sort of be, be a bit careful, I think, and, and, and draw from multiple sources. It's not a one size fits all. I think people have different experiences, but it's important not to get um, overly negative about other people's experiences and, and just follow your own path. And, and pick up tips along the way and see if they help you. You know, magnesium, for example, was mentioned that might be something to be useful because it relaxes the muscles. And I found that a benefit. Other people maybe on medication can't take it. I'm not suggesting everyone should, but it's, yeah, it's doing what, what works for you. Vicky, are there any specific um, sources that you go through for information? Well, I started actually doing some work with a charity called Parkinson's Care and Support UK and their support was invaluable and they had a whole range of information on different topics. And I actually started interviewing some experts and doctors and the like through them. So they were invaluable and it was only through going to charities like that and then and then you meet people and then that leads to something and leads to something else. But I'm also interested in, and I'm in two minds whether to go to this, next year there's the Parkinson's World event in... In, um, in Barcelona. So Barcelona. I've, I've booked my place already, actually. Yes. The last one was three years ago in Kyoto in Japan. And that was, wow. to be honest, it was a life-changing event for me. I, I really enjoyed the um, the event itself. It's a mixture of scientific research, which I'm quite interested in. Yeah. And people with Parkinson's. And it's quite unique in that, in that respect that you mix the two. And there's about 3,000 people there from all, all, every corner of the world. And it's, it's a fascinating event. And it made me realise that what I wanted to do was actually try and do research into Parkinson's and, and help in some way with, with pushing the, the dial forwards. Um, so what I actually did off the back of that was I, a couple of years later, I, I quit my job. I, I retired early and I did a master's degree in neuroscience. And I've now repurposed my career towards you know, trying to do research in, in the topic. So it was a life-changing event for me. I highly recommend it. Um, and the next one's in Barcelona in July 2023. Incredible that you did that. I mean, on my small scale, I feel exactly the same. So, you know, on the exercise front, because I think it is just so life-changing because of the amount I do, if, if it can have a massive impact on prolonging the um, the diagnosis. But I mean, that that is fantastic that, that you did that. Really, really great. Yeah, there's a lot of research. I think what people have realised is Parkinson's is very complicated. It's just not not at all straightforward how it works in the brain. and People don't really understand it. And so it just takes a long time to get to the bottom of it. And so uh, there's been this feeling for a while that we're five or ten years away from a cure. I think we're still a period of time away from a, a decent um, therapy, actually. Um, but there's, it's not for want of effort. There's, there's thousands of people researching this around the globe, and we will get there eventually. It'll just take time and funding. So a really good website for understanding the science of Parkinson's is, is it's actually called that, Science of Parkinson's. Um, it's run by a guy called Simon Stott, a, a Kiwi um, researcher who works for Cure Parkinson's in the UK. And he runs this really good website that talks about all the different research angles, all the different therapies that are under trial. And it's, it's very accessible. So I'd recommend that, Science of Parkinson's. Yeah, that is fantastic. Thank you for that. That's going to help people a lot. 
If you're interested in finding out more about Parkinson's, subscribe for a new video every Thursday.